morning guys it is a lovely morning here in vegas and i'm about ready to fix me some breakfast and talk to you all about boundaries and trauma and how you need to stop people in their tracks before it goes any further so i'm gonna take you along this morning while i cook me some breakfast and i'm gonna tell you some of the things that i'm working on let's get this breakfast together this morning i'm gonna make me some eggs some turkey sausage hash browns and toast whenever i'm making eggs i always put a lot of vegetables in it uh, uh, like spinach, mushrooms, onions, green peppers. I use the cilantro to give it a little flavor. Put some minced garlic in with my vegetables. And I have me a bottle of water. Now let me tell you something about this water. I usually buy gallon jugs of water. One of my neighbors saw me, he's like, why do you buy the gallons? I said, cause it's cheaper for me. I don't want to spend all that money getting a case of water. I haven't been buying gallons lately because at least twice a month, he brings me water. Two cases at a time. I appreciate it. Cause this is the same gentleman that whenever he needs something done on the computer, or he needs some uh, help with something, he'll call me. So, that's my buddy. I'm gonna sit down and enjoy my breakfast and then I'm gonna come back and we're gonna talk about trauma. Breakfast was good. Now let's talk. I want you all to hear me and hear me well. There are some people in your life, no matter if they're family, friends, co-workers, or whoever. Trust me, you have some people in your life who secretly hate you, who secretly are jealous of you, who secretly just don't even really want to be around you. And those are the type of people that will stab you in your back, that will let you know their true feelings toward you one day. Trust me, they will. Because the things that I went through when I became disabled, nobody ever could have told me that family and friends would have done those type of things. But you know, I also had some good people in my life. My pastor, my previous business mentor. And if it wasn't for those people in my life, I just thank God for them. I just thank God for them. So be careful who you surround yourself with. I experienced a lot of trauma as a child. From child abuse to always being told to shut up. I could never speak. If my sister was saying that I did something and I would try to speak up and say she's lying, which she was. I was told to shut up, shut your mouth. All of that type of stuff affects you as an adult. It affects you as an adult because you never learn how to express yourself. And when you try to express yourself as an adult, I've been told on many occasions that I sound like a mad just because I'm trying to get my opinion across. Why are you so angry? Why are you so mad? Why are you so upset? And I ha I've had to say, I'm not mad or angry or, or upset. I'm just trying to explain stuff, something to you. But it comes off as if 
I'm mad. Now let me tell you something. When you ask someone to stop doing something and they continue to do it over and over and you've asked them several times to stop, they are blatantly disrespecting you. But you know what? If they ask you to stop doing something and you continue to do it, they get upset, they get mad, be ready to fight, be ready to go report you. As if it's okay for them to disrespect you, but it's not okay for you to disrespect them. I don't get it. On my video where I talked about a narcissistic guy, he had a habit of doing something to me that I just hated. Not only did I hate it, but it was dangerous because a couple of times I hit my head on the wall, hurt myself just because he wouldn't stop. I would walk around the house a lot of times in my birthday suit because you know, when you're in your house, you can do that. And that's how I felt comfortable. And if I bent over to get something, he would sneak up behind me and stick his finger in my butt. I would tell him constantly, stop doing that. And if I, if I hit my head into a wall or something, and I would tell him, now see, this is why I tell you to stop. And he thought it was funny. And he just continued to do it. That's why I'm no longer with that idiot. That's one of the reasons. Because as an adult, you shouldn't have to tell someone over and over and over and over to stop doing something. Because when you tell them the first time, when you ask them the first time, they should stop. If they don't, they are disrespecting you. Get the heck away from them. I don't go around disrespecting people, and I don't allow people to disrespect me anymore. But I did for years. My, my mom and my sister, they have done so much stuff to me that I had to move. And when I say move, I ain't talking about moving next door. I'm not talking about moving a half an hour away from them. I'm talking about moving 500 miles away from them. And now I'm like 1,200 miles away from them. They don't have my phone number. They don't have my address. I got tired. Because let me tell you what disrespect and stress will do for you. It'll kill you. It'll stress you out and it will kill you. You have got to learn how to stop people from disrespecting you and just thinking that they can say anything to you. I can remember years ago, I never spoke up for myself. And people used to say all kind of stupid stuff. And they, they, they thought it was funny. And it would hurt my feelings so bad. I would go home every evening. And my husband had to hear every evening what I should have did, what I should have said. You know, and, and he was like, well, why don't you just tell people that? I was scared. Why I was scared? I don't know. I had my fir first nervous breakdown at 23 years old. 23. And when I'm in the hospital and seeing the psychiatrist and everything, and we're talking, and I explained to him one of my problems was I had so much mental going on up here because of things people had said or did to me, and I would never respond except for I would cry or just be upset about it. And he asked me, he says, well, when someone says something to you that upsets you, tell them that upsets you, you know, and if that doesn't stop them, then return the favor. Said, what, do, what do you mean? He says, I mean that if they continue to disrespect you, then you need to start disrespecting them to let them see how it feels. Hmm. I'm at work one day. One of my co-workers who used to always say stupid things or do stupid things, 
She tried me that day. And I looked at her and I said something just as stupid to her. And she looked at me and she said, you hurt my feelings. And I thought to myself, are you kidding me? I told her, I said, I hurt your feelings. I said, you've been hurting my feelings for how long? And now that I've said something to you, you're telling me I hurt your feelings. I said, well, you know what? From here on in, you need to stop and think before you speak to me and ask yourself, and what is what I'm about to say to her stupid and hurting her feelings? And if so, how is she going to respond back to me? She stopped it. Because she knew after that day, every time she said something ignorant and stupid to me, I returned the favor. Over years, I learned how to return the favor to people. I would tell them, don't speak to me that way. You just hurt my feelings. And if they continue, hey, you're going to disrespect me, I'm going to return the favor to you. When people call themselves disrespecting me now, I just exit them out of my life. Because if you don't have enough common sense to act like you appreciate somebody, I don't appreciate you either. I just, now, I just don't put up with it. Do it once or twice. I wash my hands of you. You are gone. Because if I told you, you're gone. Speaking of boundaries, my son and I, we don't have the best relationship because of the trauma I put him through. And you know what? I've apologized to him. He'll be 40 this month, but he told me, Mom, I need time. I need time. And you know, I used to try to force it and I finally told him one day, apparently you feel the same way about me as I feel about my mom. So I'm gonna bag off. And I have, because those are his boundaries. I have to respect his boundaries. Haven't seen my son probably in about 10 years. Haven't spoke to him. I heard from him the other day through an email, only because my stepfather passed and my mom wanted me to know. But I have to respect his boundaries. It hurts because I love him, but at the same time, I don't want him to have to deal with pain and stress and uh, disrespect like I did until he gets in his 60s, no. I want him to have some peace and happiness in his life. I found that it's best to surround yourself with positive people, people who will uplift you, people who will encourage you, not people who are tearing you down and telling you you can't do it or you stupid or this, that, and other. No, get away from those type of people because for me, when I don't have stress in my life, when I don't have negativity, and I don't have negative people around me, look out. I can conquer the world. And when you have peace of mind, you can look good, you can get things done, you can live in peace, and that's the way I want my life to be. On to the good stuff. I am working on a boycott with acrylic legs. If you've been a subscriber to this channel, you've heard me talk about that boycott last year. Well, I'm going to get that boycott finished up within these next two weeks. That's one thing I'm going to be working on. This item behind me, I'm going to finish that up and get this and a couple of other items hung on my wall and on the other side and I'm working on my living room next. You want to come back for that one, guys. So if you're not subscribed to this channel, 
please hit that subscribe button. Click that notification bell so you will be notified when I put out more beautiful DIYs and continue to decorate my apartment. You guys be blessed, and I'll see you later.